The year is 8020 and the world looks vastly different from today. The United States is rapidly expanding westward, leading to conflicts with Native American tribes, Japan is under the rule of shoguns and samurai, and Europe's industrial revolution is in full swing, reshaping society with factories and steam engines. While the world was changing at an unprecedented pace, an English mathematician was about to lay the foundation for one of the most revolutionary inventions in history. Charles Babbage observed that astronomical and mathematical tables of the period were riddled with errors due to the limitations of manual calculations. This led him to conceive a machine that could automate computations, making them faster and more accurate. Little did he know that his work would earn him the title of father of the computer and set in motion the technological revolution we'll explore in today's episode of Fascinating History. Let's start by clarifying what a computer actually is. In simple terms, a computer is a machine designed to process information. It takes input from a user or another system, stores that data, processes it based on a set of instructions, and then produces an output. What's interesting is that while modern computers are electronic, Charles Babbage's designs were mechanical, relying on gears and levers to perform calculations. The different and analytical engines were never fully built during his lifetime, but they introduced concepts that remain relevant to this day. His work laid the foundation for key principles in computing, including the separation of storage and processing, the logical structure of computers, and the methods for inputting and outputting data and instructions. These principles would be formalized more than a century later, with the publication of the von Neumann architecture of modern computing, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. One of the most significant developments in mechanical computing came in 1890, when Hermann Hollerith created the automatic electrical tabulating machine. This device was designed to process data from the US Census, which had become an overwhelming task due to the country's rapidly growing population of over 62 million people. Using punched cards, the machine could sort, count, and process census data faster than ever before, reducing what would have been a 10-year manual process to just a few months. This breakthrough was so impactful that Hollerith would patent it and later go on and found the Computing Tabulating Recording Company, a small startup which would evolve into the company we know today as the International Business Machines Corporation. A couple more decades had to pass for another breakthrough to occur in the industry. While mechanical components like gears and punch cards had been the backbone of early computing, the 1930s and 1940s saw a shift toward electromechanical and fully electrical computers. Instead of relying solely on moving parts, these machines used electrical relays and switches to process data more efficiently. The first electromechanical binary calculator, modestly named the Model K, after the kitchen table where it was assembled, was built by George Stibitz at Bell Labs in 1937. It used electrically controlled switches and relays to perform calculations, but it was a demonstration device that only performed simple binary additions. However, a huge milestone was achieved just a year later, when Konrad Zuse developed the Z1. This was a fully programmable binary computer with a mechanical memory unit and a control system that could execute simple instructions. While it remained a prototype, Zeus's ideas paved the way for Z3, the first fully operational electromechanical computer, in 1941. Another fascinating computer of the era was BOM. Designed by Alan Turing together with Gordon Welchman in July 1940 and operational just a few months later, BOM played a crucial role in shortening the Second World War by helping the Allies break Enigma encrypted messages. But the real leap was yet to come. In order to scale, computing had to move from mechanical gears, punched cards and vacuum tubes, to transistors and microprocessors. Before looking at the first electronic computers, let me tell you a few words about today's sponsor. Hostinger is one of the best web hosting providers out there, offering fast, reliable, and affordable hosting for developers, businesses, and anyone who wants a website without the headache. What's more exciting is that they just launched Hostinger Horizons, a no-code, AI-powered, all-in-one solution that allows you to turn your idea into a live web app in just a couple of minutes. Just type in a prompt describing your idea and get your web app with only one click. Once the first draft is ready, you can keep adding features or tweak your web app with follow-up prompts, fix bugs with the help of AI, or revert to previous versions. When you are happy with the results, just click the Deploy button and you'll get an all-in-one solution where you can use Hostinger to manage anything from hosting to domains and emails. On top of that, you'll get 24-7 expert support and a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you are an entrepreneur excited to bring your idea to life, a startup looking for a faster way to prototype and launch, or you just need a web app but lack the coding skills, use the code AWESOME and the link in the description to get 10% of your first month's subscription. The first programmable electronic computer has a name worthy for both its size and its achievements. 
Standing over 7 feet tall, weighing more than a ton, and packed with over 2,000 vacuum tubes, Colossus was designed to crack the Lorentz cipher, a highly sophisticated encryption system used by Nazi Germany for high-level military communications. More importantly, however, around this time, the first computer bug was reported, but the incident is far from what one would expect. Engineers at Harvard University were working on Harvard Mark II, an electromechanical computer, when it suddenly started malfunctioning. When the technicians opened up the machine to investigate, they found an unexpected culprit. A moth. The insect had gotten stuck between the contacts of an electromechanical relay, disrupting the circuit. On a more serious note, as computers tackled increasingly complex problems, the need for specialized features grew. One notable breakthrough in this context was the Williams Tube, first introduced in the Manchester Baby Computer in 1948. The Williams Tube, developed by Freddie Williams and Tom Kilburn, was the first random access digital storage device. Unlike earlier computers that relied on punched cards, mechanical switches, or delay lines, the Williams Tube used a cathode ray tube to store binary data as electrostatic charges. This innovation marked the beginning of modern computer storage, as information could now be stored and retrieved at electronic speeds, rather than relying on slow mechanical storage methods. While the Williams Tube was a groundbreaking step forward, it was not without flaws, since data stored on it could fade over time, and the technology was sensitive to interference. This pushed researchers to develop more stable storage solutions, leading to the invention of magnetic core memory in the early 1950s. Computers were evolving at an unprecedented pace, and the next revolution was on the horizon. They proved useful and efficient in the scientific and defense fields, so now it was time for everybody involved to make some real money. The first commercially available computers came in the 1950s, but they were far from the powerful devices we can buy for a few hundred bucks today. Universal Automatic Computer 1, the first mass-produced computer, was sold at a whopping price of $1.5 million, which is around $20 million in today's money, adjusted for inflation. Despite its massive 5-ton weight and the need for thousands of vacuum tubes, Univac could perform calculations significantly faster than humans or previous mechanical computers, and it became famous for correctly predicting the outcome of the 1952 US presidential election. Around the same time, IBM also saw the potential in commercial computing and introduced the IBM 701 in 1952. Unlike Univac, IBM had a reputation for business machines, and its computers quickly became the industry standard for corporate and scientific use. However, there was one big problem. These machines still relied on vacuum tubes, which made them bulky, expensive, and power-hungry. Well, a tiny invention from Bell Labs was about to change that. Transistors are tiny electronic components that act as both a switch and an amplifier for electrical signals. They control the flow of electricity in a circuit similar to how a light switch turns electricity on and off. However, unlike a traditional mechanical switch, a transistor can switch millions or even billions of times per second, making it essential for high-speed computing. The first fully transistorized computer was built by Bell Labs in 1954. Tradic contained about 700 transistors, replacing bulky vacuum tubes and showing that computers could be built on a much smaller scale. Just a year later, IBM introduced the IBM 608, the first commercial computer to completely replace vacuum tubes with transistors. However, it was still far from affordable, with a price tag of $300,000 or $3 million adjusted for inflation. With transistors revolutionizing computing, the 1960s saw an explosion of progress. Computers became smaller, cheaper, and more accessible. The development of the integrated circuits, which put multiple transistors on a single chip, would lead to even better performance and greater miniaturization. However, we are still missing a crucial piece of the puzzle before computers can truly become affordable and widely adopted. The real game-changer finally arrived in 1971, when Intel released the first commercially available microprocessor. Unlike earlier computers that required multiple transistors and integrated circuits to form a CPU, the Intel 4004 condensed an entire central processing unit onto a single chip. Building on this momentum, the Altair 8800 became the first widely popular personal computer powered by a microprocessor. Even more interesting, it was sold in kit form to electronics hobbyists, meaning purchasers had to assemble their own computers. This sparked the home computing revolution. Fast forward a couple of years, and 1977 marks an inflection point with the rise of the legendary Trinity, which eventually went on to sell millions of units worldwide. These early computers had between 4 and 48 kilobytes of RAM, and Apple II was the only one with a full-color graphics-capable display. 
Apple II, originally priced at close to $1300, will eventually become the bestseller of the trio, with more than 4 million units sold. This was all the proof companies needed that the personal computer was the future. The success of the Trinity ignited a race among tech companies to bring computing into homes, schools and offices worldwide. Throughout the 1980s, competition intensified as companies like IBM, Commodore and Apple introduced increasingly powerful and affordable machines. In 1981, IBM launched the IBM Personal Computer, which set the standard for business computing. Unlike earlier machines, the IBM PC ran on an open architecture allowing third-party developers to create compatible hardware and software. Meanwhile, Apple doubled down on innovation, releasing the Lisa and the Macintosh, the first consumer computers to feature a graphical user interface and a mouse, making them far more user-friendly than their text-based predecessors. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, personal computers had moved from being a hobbyist gadget to an essential tool for work, communication and entertainment. The rise of Microsoft Windows, the dominance of Intel processors, and the emergence of the Internet would soon launch the world into the digital revolution. By 1995, the Internet had begun reshaping society, with companies like Amazon and eBay launching online marketplaces that would change the way people shopped forever. That same year, Microsoft released Windows 95, which introduced the Start menu and made computing more accessible than ever. Meanwhile, hardware advancements pushed computing to new heights. The release of the Intel Pentium processor in 1993 provided a significant leap in speed and efficiency, allowing for complex applications like 3D gaming and multimedia editing. Speaking of gaming, Sony's PlayStation, launched in 1994, helped solidify video games as a dominant entertainment industry. But the real innovation was about to take shape in a new millennium. Computing became smaller, faster and more connected, with the Internet at the heart of it all. One of the defining moments of this decade came in 2001, when Apple introduced the iPod. At first glance, it might have seemed just a regular MP3 player, but it was far more than that. The iPod was sleek, portable and could hold thousands of songs in your pocket. Combined with iTunes, it revolutionized the music industry, shifting it from physical CDs to digital downloads. Around the same time, Microsoft released Windows XP, an operating system that would become one of the most successful in history. It combined stability, user-friendliness and widespread compatibility, solidifying the PC's role in everyday life. But no innovation from the 2000s would be as disruptive and groundbreaking as what Apple unveiled in 2007. This is when Apple introduced the iPhone, forever changing the way people interacted with technology. Unlike previous mobile phones, which relied on keypads and styluses, the iPhone featured a full touchscreen interface, an intuitive operating system and a revolutionary app store where third-party developers could create and distribute applications. The impact was immediate. Within a few years, smartphones became essential, replacing cameras, GPS devices, MP3 players and even laptops for casual users. Gaming saw yet another revolution with the emergence of virtual and augmented reality. In 2016, Oculus Rift brought immersive VR gaming to mainstream audiences with games like Pokemon Go, introducing millions of people to AR, blending digital elements with the real world. Stepping back to the present, the 2020s are shaping up to be the next frontier in computing, driven by advancements in artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Quantum computing, which leverages the principles of quantum mechanics to perform calculations at unprecedented speeds, is becoming a reality. Companies like Google, Amazon and Microsoft are racing to build practical quantum computers, which could revolutionize everything from cryptography to drug discovery. So here we are. The computing revolution that started with Charles Babbage's mechanical gears has led us to a world where machines can learn, automate complex tasks and even predict human behavior. If you'd like to learn more about tech history, you might find these videos interesting as well. Until next time, thank you for watching.